I'm going to show you how to step-by-step step make a department store alien. So here is my embarrassingly bad sketch. I'll show you what I plan to do. So he's got a base and he's he might be holding a microphone and a ray gun but I haven't decided yet. But for his head, I think I'm probably going to give him a foil core inside of there. And since these are pretty small, they don't need any foil cores. But this will need to be strengthened with some wire. So I'll put some wire there. And then to connect them to the base, if you bake all of these, they will kind of squish down in the oven. So I'm going to probably bake his head first. And then second, I'll bake these. And I'll have him standing on his base with one piece of wire that will go from the base into the head and that will keep him standing up and keep these tentacles from falling over. Got all my materials here. I've got a little piece of wire for the armature. I've got some pieces of foil in case I need that. And I have some different co colors of clay. I have kind of a, a ball of scrap clay that I'm hoping to kind of marble and use as a base. And a little bit of this lime green. Since he has kind of orangish eyes, I've got some red and yellow and white for the eyes and a smile, a translucent primo. When it bakes, it becomes more transparent. So I was thinking since he's a slimy kind of green alien, I'll give him a little bit of a uh, another kind of dimension to make him sort of transparent too. I've got my tools for working and I have a paper towel for wiping my hands off in between colors. It's especially important when working between a color as strong as red and one as uh, light as white or um, translucent. Those can be tinted really easily even if you don't want them to be. I'll start by making the eyes. Now is also the time to start thinking about how large you want to make your piece. If it's too large, obviously it's not going to fit in the oven. And there are some ways around that. You can make your, your clay piece in parts. And then after you bake each part, you can assemble it when you're finally done. But um, it does go together a lot better if you can make it all kind of fit together at once. So there's, there's one eye, and he's got three. And as you work with this clay, you'll find that it warms up. and you don't want to work with it just completely cold right out of the package. You want to knead it a little so it will be conditioned. Next I'll make his smile. So he's got kind of a crescent shaped smile. It kind of curves around the third bottom eye. I'm working on a piece of paper because the clay doesn't stick very well to paper. So I put all the pieces together to kind of get an idea of the proportions and make sure that they look right. But he still needs some teeth. He's got a toothy smile now. Next, his eyes need pupils. And Red is an extremely strong color, so if you're mixing it with another color, you don't want to use very much. I'm going to start out using a tiny bit because I can always add more later. And mixing this colored clay is kind of like mixing paint. So if you mix two complementary colors, you'll get kind of a gray color. If you mix two primary colors, you can get purple or orange or green. I've got his three eyes and his three pupils and I'm going to now add them together. These three are ready to be set aside while I work on his face. So now it's time to mix the green color for his body. You want to mix enough to use on his entire, or for his entire body, otherwise you'll have to keep going back and mixing and it's really difficult to match 
one color that you've already mixed and, and try to figure out the proportions again. So I'll start by conditioning this clay and it's a little crumbly to start out with. And I cut it into small pieces because it's easier to work with that way than if it's in one giant block. I like to use a pasta machine to condition my clay, but it's it takes a little investment. You can just use your hands too. It takes a little bit longer and it takes a bit more hand strength, but it does work. I just spent the last hour conditioning this piece of clay. Occasionally you'll get a extra hard block of clay and despite my best efforts they still show up sometimes at the store and the way you can kind of test for that is squish the package and see how easily your fingernail will indent in the clay but that doesn't always work because I did that with this piece and it didn't um, didn't show so mm. <laughs> anyway I finally got it conditioned it's still a little bit crumbly but it'll work so now I'm going to make the head so this is all of the clay that I have to work with. So taking a look at the, the proportions here, the eyes, I'm going to guess that the head will probably be about like this. So this will be enough for the, the other two eyes, the tentacles, and any other little spots that I need to fill in later on. So to make the head, I'll just make a little ball. and. I think this is actually a little smaller than I thought it was going to be, so I'm not going to need a foil core. But if you did need a foil core, now would be the time to go ahead and wrap your clay around a, a piece of compressed foil. I'll just smooth this out. It's pretty easy to make a ball, you just <laughs> go like this for a little while. Well, this isn't quite big enough to have a problem with cracking in the oven. So I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to flatten out the face just a little bit so when I stick the smile on it'll go on kind of a flatter surface not stick out so badly. Okay, and if you see, it's a little bit st sticking out a little, and that's okay. If you don't like it, you can you can redo it, and um, I'll show you how. You can just slice off the back of the eye very carefully, so you get some extra clay off of there, and the eye will be all distorted like this. But you can kind of get it stuck back into shape if you need it to be. So this will go on here a little bit flatter. It won't stick out so much. And as long as you're careful, you can kind of peel these pieces off and put, reposition them. But every time you do, you do kind of flatten it out a little bit more. So just be careful. And there's a little bit of excess, so let's cut that off. Here he is so far. Doesn't have a whole lot to him yet. But he's going to get there. So the next thing I'm going to work on is the base. I'm going to give this a kind of marbled effect. And because he's in a department store, I'm going to make it look like tiles. So the first thing I'll do is just kind of chop it up a little. You can see the different colors all the way through. Just kind of roll them and twist them around. I'm simultaneously conditioning and marbling this clay. Flatten it out into kind of a little pancake. And don't make it too thin, but about like that is probably good. I'll make it perfectly round with a cutter. I'm going to use the dull side and 
just kind of stamp it in the little squares. There's the marbled base, and I like to put my initials on the back. So I'm using the dull side of a needle. I'm just going to write C Y. I've got my clay oven preheating outside. I use a toaster oven. And I've got a piece of paper here that I'm going to bake these on. It's hot enough to burn the paper, it will definitely burn the clay. Paper can go into the oven up to 400 degrees, and it's not going to be anywhere near that. So these are all ready to go into my preheated oven. While those are baking, I'm going to make two things for the department store alien to hold in his tentacles. One is going to be an old-fashioned microphone, and then I'm also going to make a ray gun. So here's the base. So this is the main part of the microphone. Those old-fashioned ones have these unusual little indentations along the top and the sides. It's kind of hard to tell what it's supposed to be right now. But I'll add a little more detail, and maybe it'll look a little bit more like a microphone. This is just a stylus, but it happens to have this nice pattern on it. I've got a bunch of different colors here that I'll use to make the ray gun. Start out with blue. And keeping in mind with how small this guy is going to end up being, I'm going to make a fairly small ray gun make a teardrop shape. Next I'll make the handle. This clay is unusually squishy and sticky. Some of these colors are going to be a little different than others. This color is just really crumbly and kind of hard and red is usually really squishy. I think this is going to be too squishy to work with. It's too hot in here. So I'll just put that one aside and use another color. <laughs> Occasionally, you just have to adapt to your <laughs> environment and what the clay is doing. Here's the ray gun so far. I'm going to add a few little decorations to it. The ray gun and the old fashioned microphone are all ready to be baked. These pieces have been baked and they're all completely cooled. One of the tools I haven't introduced yet that I use all the time is a Dremel. I've marked where I need to make a little uh, hole and I just kind of went around and um, made some little tiny holes with my needle. So I'll, I'll need to make one in the base and then two on the top of the head for the eye stalks and one on the bottom to connect this to the base so that it's, it's standing on its own. That way, when I add the tentacles, they aren't taking any of the weight. They're just filling up this space. I've got a drill bit on here that is just the right size um, to, to match with this tie wire. One hole in here, and I'm not going to drill all the way through this. Just enough so that I can set the wire in there. And you're left with all these little pieces everywhere from the drill created, so get those out of there, throw them away, or they'll get stuck into your clay as you're working. Cut the tie wire to size. Be really careful because every cut you make makes this wire razor sharp. It stands up, kind of. Once it's glued and once it's got the tentacles in there to support it, it'll be fine. So make sure you keep track of each of these pieces and throw them away right away because it's very painful to get these in your foot. For the eye stalks, I'll do the same thing. I'll just kind of measure where shall I put those eyes? About like that. I like to set the wire in there first and then cut it because sometimes you drill a little further in on one side than the other and one side requires a longer or shorter wire. I'll use a little bit of glue to 
set these in here, but it's not really going to be what holds it all together. I'm going to coat these wires in clay, um, obviously, for the, the eye stalks, and this will be completely hidden. The glue I like to use is Zapagap. It doesn't hold up well in the heat, so if you do glue some pieces and then bake them, don't expect them to continue to stay together afterwards because the, um, the heat seems to weaken this glue. So you don't need very much. I'm going to not connect this to the base right now just so I can pick it up and move it around if I need to as I'm adding the tentacles. The next part I'll add are the eye stalks. I'm going to start with a little bit of translucent liquid Sculpey. That'll help the clay stick to the metal. You just want to make it perfectly cylindrical. So he's got some seams around the bottom of his eye stalks. And you can leave those there if you like them, but I think I'm going to smooth them out. Slowly press the clay down around the edge and smooth it together. Here's what it looks like once the eye stalks are all smoothed onto the head. Next I'll work on the two eyes at the top. So to make the eyes, I've got these two eyeballs baked already. So for the green part, I need to get two even or same sized balls of clay. So it kind of makes some little oval shapes. And then get the baked eye and squish it on onto there so that it just kind of becomes a part of it. I'm going to add the bottom lids first. I'm going to keep it fairly roundy so he looks like he has some kind of baggy eyes. And then just add the top lid. So the eyelids are all on. Next it's time to attach them to the head. So I'll add a little bit of translucent liquid polyclay. Not too much or it'll squish out the edge. I will make a little mark so that it's easier to put together. And next, I'll just smooth the seam. The eyes are all attached now, and the last part is to work on the tentacles. So I have all these tentacles ready to go. They're just a, a tapered snake that's been cut in half. I've started adding the tentacles, and I kind of smooth the seam as I go for each one. I've got all the tentacles placed on there and I cut this to the right height so that it won't show but it's bound to show a little so I'm gonna probably put a few more tentacles in there to to cover up some of the space but you'll wanna just kind of arrange them a little so that they look like he's standing on them or that they're curly. And also keep in mind that we still have to add the microphone somewhere, probably right here, and the ray gun. Sometimes you need a little bit of help.
it called Scoby. This side isn't going to be seen, so put this in there. Kind of tuck it in there like it's being held. Maybe I'll put his tentacle on the trigger. It's hard to get it to stay. And this one is too heavy to hold it up, so I'll just leave a little curl there. And then once it's baked, I'll just tuck this in. Just a little more detail here and there. I mixed a little bit of white clay with some of this green. And I'll add just a few little dots here and there to make it look like he's got some little alien warts. So it'll be really teeny tiny. Alright, I think he's ready to go in the oven. While I'm waiting for the critter to bake, I'm going to paint this silver. So this is just some kind of stuff you can rub on to the clay. And it brings out the texture. I think it's just about done. Came out of the oven just fine. And remember when you take something directly out of the oven, it's going to be really soft still and very fragile, so be careful with it. So I've got some Sculpey Gloss Glaze. You don't need a whole lot, just kind of paint it on. And I usually do this on just the eyes and the smile. This kind of gives it a little bit more realism, kind of brings it to life just a little. It's done! See, it's got the ray gun back there and the microphone and hooray! Well, I hope that you enjoy learning a little bit more about polymer clay and I hope that you try it out.